Hi, I'm Juliana and I'm co-founder and director of Low Carbon City. Our module is divided in three sessions, citizen participation, opportunities, and a small story of Low Carbon City as case study. So let's begin. Citizen engagement is key to achieving sustainable development and environmental goals. Not only because from our attitudes and behaviors, we can be part of the problem, but also because we can create solutions individually and along with our communities. From our individual perspective, think about your daily routines and reflect on how your behavior can contribute to the current environmental problems that were described in previous modules. What you eat, where you buy, the clothing you wear, the waste you generate, the resources you use, the politicians you vote for, in case you already vote. All our actions can have a negative footprint on the environment. However, with conscious decisions, you can transform those patterns and live more sustainable. I invite you to check the 30 Days for the Climate campaign that challenges you with 30 simple gestures to live more environmental friendly. I have tried already by myself, and I find it very simple, funny, and it's easy to share with my friends. And I realize that it's also simple and easy to change your patterns and live more sustainable. From a community perspective, governments can reach sustainable development goals alone. They need support and guidance from the public because communities know their territories and how environmental impacts affect their context and they can become mobilizers and co-creators of solutions. Citizen participation not only increases the legitimacy of decisions but also helps to ensure policymakers to have valuable local knowledge. Citizen participation in environmental governance includes both formal participation process, which are invited spaces, and mobilization by engaging citizens, which are created spaces. So these created spaces often emerge because citizens are dissatisfied with the available or not existing invited spaces. However, the two are frequently deeply intertwined. We'll focus next on mobilization examples, although we encourage you to research what are some formal ways citizens can participate in your government locally or nationally. For example, in my own city, there is a mechanism called participatory budget in which people can vote for the project they want to be developed in their own neighborhood. Isn't it cool, right? So let's move to what kind of formats you can develop to promote citizen-led solutions. So first, promoting events. This format can help to gather experts, citizens, policymakers into horizontal conversations. It demonstrates that active role that citizens can play in decision-making and developing a consensus-based approach to tackling difficult issues such as biodiversity loss or climate change. The second is citizen science. It is another means by which citizens can be empowered to recognize their voice and it can make the difference finding public data. Citizens can participate and collaborate in scientific research to one hand increase scientific knowledge but on the other hand, to chair and contribute to data monitoring and collection of projects. The third is public awareness. So whether it is for changing or promoting policies, raising awareness or promoting changing behaviors, citizens can develop tactical urbanism actions, uh, creative interventions, or even public campaigns about a specific issue that a community is facing. The fourth is project development. So by getting together students, community leaders, and different stakeholders, 
citizens can create solutions for their neighborhoods, for their cities, or for their communities. And at the same time, they can crowdsource the means for implementation. So recently, attention has also focused on harnessing social innovations and local action. And you can find great examples in different networks, such as the Ashoka Young Changemakers, which is a global network of powerful young people who are creating and everyone a changemaker world. And finally, is the constructive dialogue which basically seeks for open spaces for learning, discussing, and proposing solutions for communities, engaging different actors and stakeholders. As you've seen in previous module 13, you can use different tools for engaging citizens in these actions. Of course, these are just some examples, but we want to invite you to find new alternatives to be creative and always believe that we can all be part of the solution. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm the co-founder of Low Carbon City. And five years ago, along with a group of friends from different nationalities, we were following the SDGs and the Paris Agreement negotiations. And through that journey, we identified the importance of including citizens as part of the solutions. So since then, Low Carbon City has been building and mobilizing a global community of citizens committed to create collective actions to tackle climate change. We educate people for climate-friendly lifestyles using participatory and creative tools. We connect people with experts and change makers to collaborate. We co-create and implement low-cost and scalable solutions along with communities, engaging governments, companies, and different stakeholders. So let me show you some of the examples on what we do. So first of all, we have developed five editions of the Low Carbon City World Forum, a venue to share solutions and best practices that is accessible to all. It's been developed in Colombia, Mexico, France, Costa Rica, and online. And along with this, we have developed different events which are aimed to promote education and connect different stakeholders along climate issues and solutions. We have also promoted policy making through our creative interventions. We have pushed decarbonization policies and make the topic become important in the public agenda for citizens and all stakeholders. We have also, for connecting, uh, created a network around the world where organizations holding great solutions are collaborating with us to expand our impact. We have also created low-cost scalable solutions along with communities in a collaborative process in areas such as renewable energy, waste management, sustainable mobility, urban agriculture, among others. So since December 2015, we have mobilized over 90,000 people and we have expanded our network and developed over 500 activities and projects in over 130 cities. Low Carbon City is a happy example that we can be part of the solution and co-create collaborative process with friends, networks, and like-minded people. Finally, I want to emphasize my invitation to be part of the change. As an individual, you can change your behavior with simple actions such as taking your own back to the market, commuting by public transport, even using your own bike. And as a leader, you can mobilize your community and become a change maker. The following modules will inspire you with more tools and perspectives for this journey. So good luck. Hi there, we hope you liked this episode. For more information and resources about the ideas and tips discussed in this episode, check out the worksheet dedicated to support your change maker journey. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on social media or visit youthforplanet.com. See you in the next video!